Hello again Struck Club, today I'm bringing you a summary or an overview of the patch from yesterday, the patch that introduced the Fazir Shah's dungeon challenge into the live realm, the live server of Torchlight 3. So we've had some time to play with uh, the end game, the Fazir's dungeon challenge on the private testing and public testing realms but now it's time for it to make its debut on the live servers uh, it is uh, fun uh, it still needs some work and some updates but uh, overall it's a nice uh, interesting uh, experience uh, of an end game that uh, you can do once you finish act 3 and there's also a lot of other changes with this patch it's so big that it's uh, also required to times the, the steam post, two steam posts to fit all the patch notes but some worthy mentions would be the new pet uh, models evasion being a thing you can get from armors uh, rebalancing to the classes, uh, changes to the difficulty bonuses so that monsters move faster and much much more now let's talk about uh, the major change, the Fazir's Dungeon Challenge being a thing uh, into the game now. How and when to unlock it? Well, first of all, you need to complete Act 1, 2 and 3. After finishing Act 3, you can talk to this NPC in Travel Point, the Mysterious Wanderer, and once you uh, click on this OK button that um, from the dialogue, he would give you the fourth de decor, the fourth decor of the Fazir's Dungeon that you can then place in your uh, fort. You have to load up to your fort, uh, go into the customize option, you can uh, go to the adventure tab and select it from there. So let's show you now how that would work. So here it is, the Fazir uh, Dungeon Fort Decor. You go to customize fort as I said, uh, place it from the inventory or from the adventure tab, whichever is more convenient to you. I did it from the inventory and then you can just interact with uh, the fort decor. There's a quick overview but I'm gonna also include uh, the overview from the patch notes um, like the the instructions and uh, explanation about it. You would see it on, you, on the side. Basically you talk to it and he would uh, give you a set of challenges. And each challenge would give you a negative and a positive affix uh, as well as at the top you would see poison or fire or shock would be the base of the enemies and the image would represent kind of the type of enemies you might want to see and uh, the location that uh, that this might be happening in as well as the name of the map eventually you're going to learn the map names and then on the side you're probably noticing challenge rules that's also negative modifiers and at first you start with zero, then once you complete the first set of challenges, which is three, by completing this boss encounter, you unlock a new challenge and that's where the negative challenge modifiers start uh, uh, adding up. But uh, they're not really adding up like you get one challenge, then this remains, then you get the other. Each challenge has its own set of rules. So from 4 to 7 it's Nimbo, from 8 to 11 it's Berserking and so on. Then eventually you start getting two modifiers. And at the end uh, for the final few uh, challenges you would be getting three modifiers on the side on top of the negative and positive modifier on the card that you select for the challenge level that you select. So. Pretty interesting, pretty nice modifications and again if you fail a challenge keep in mind that those modifiers would reset, the cards would reset as well. So you've got some interesting choices ahead of you. You can read more on the patch notes uh, or you can also watch my my overview video for this, the introduction to endgame video. So let's quickly show you a, a quick boss fight and then uh, talk more about what could be happening. So this is just a quick wide world boss fight. Um, you would be fighting all those villains, all those mini bosses and bosses from the story. You would be able to revisit them um, by doing the uh, dungeon challenges. So that's a pretty nice system. So apart from dungeon, let's talk about other things. And what else is there to talk about? Well, one of the more uh, important things that you might notice is the force move option. People were asking for force move instead of just force move uh, click. So now you have force move hold, which means you're holding uh, the button, the hotkey, which by default is T. And while you're holding T, the hero moves wherever your cursor is without you needing to click. And this is separate from the 
from the left click button. You can bind it on the left click but uh, I'm not sure whether that's a really great idea. Maybe a thumb button would be a better idea. Because uh, some people have been experiencing some problems with uh, binding it to, to the left click. So just be aware of that. And after that let's talk about some other fixes to items. There are a few item related things I want to talk about, but first let's talk about the pet items. The pet items can now be enchanted and you can also use uh, wife uh, bound scrolls on those. So keep in mind uh, until now we couldn't uh, enchant pet items. Uh, during the early access uh, something was broken there but it has been fixed and now we can enchant them and not only that but we can also wife bind them. Now there's also other options for the map works. The map works uh, used to give you just a fixed set of uh, gear work maps, gear working maps. Now they no longer give you gear working maps only. They give you a bundle that contains random maps inside. As you can see in the footage I'm showing you there's different types of uh, maps that you can get from those bundles so may the RNG be with you and you get those uh, nice maps you want to be doing. So after that what other changes do we want to talk about? Well there's uh, a bit of changes to the legendarium not that much mostly fixes but um, legendarium um, effects now apply set bonuses uh, correctly and the scroll of wife mount also no longer uh, indicates that legendary items uh, are in uh, are valid targets meaning you cannot uh, wife bind legendary items anymore only a blue green uh, and I'm not sure about white items I've never tried it but I assume you can do those too so there's other changes increases the increases to potion related stuff so the general potion drop uh, has been kind of reworked uh, and uh, they've removed the 20% potion work from normal and hard difficulty levels and reduced the 30% potion work on painful to 10% potion work reduced the 40% on ridiculous to 20% and they also increased the chance that the potion drops from uh, work will happen at lower levels so that's pretty much uh, some of the things I wanted to talk about uh, in regards to items and now let's move on to monster related changes. Now regarding the monster related changes the first thing you might notice is the monsters on ridiculous and painful move faster now and that's also true for hard as well and you can see on your screen some of the values 10% 25% and 50% on hard painful and ridiculous this is kind of an interesting change I'm not that big of a fan of it but uh, I guess if they rebound some of the enemies it would work well such as the Hivit soldiers and drones that are very powerful and the goblin brutes now we've got monsters who now react to your hits more often uh, as well and then again as I mentioned in the intro of the video uh, changes to to evasion and evasion would uh, keep getting reworked for now uh, it can appear on armor only and it is like functionally the same as block you can cap it at 40% and then have 40% block chance which would mean uh, when both are capped it's like around 30% chance to get hit in total only so evasion will get some sort of rework uh, re revamps uh, as a system for now that's its basic uh, state but it will be improved and keep in mind it can drop as a primary and secondary affix on armors now let's move on to talking about the relics a little the relics uh, will get a major rework so I'm not gonna mention uh, a what and even the patch notes didn't have that much but I'm just gonna mention one major change which you would notice is the relic activation skill SWAT which used to be default E um, is now um, moved and changed to a regular skill bar SWAT which you can assign uh, different uh, skills to if you want to. Next uh, what I want to talk about is the pet. The new pets that were added there were three designs. Actually it's one type of pet but with three different varieties, three different colors. So buttercup forest and uh, toasty glitter sprites or fairies. Some people call them flying cows. I mean yeah whatever whatever works for them. Uh, it's it's a definitely a nice looking pet so I hope you enjoy uh, finding those and keep in mind they're only obtainable at level 60 along with a new cat pet that uh, has also been added. Next we're gonna talk about classes, some of the changes that came to the classes such as the change where uh, an issue was fixed uh, 
with the customization um, so you can read uh, on your screen about that and then we've got some changes to the Realm Master, Disk Mage, uh, Sharpshooter and Forged for the Realm Master uh, you can see on your uh, screen some changes were done to shield car and then something I've noticed the Realm Master flamethrower car, shotgun car and mortar car now having more impactful endurance bonus effects I did try them out and I can tell you one thing uh, I hope gets fixed soon that's the Doom Pipe the Doom Pipe works for flamethrower but it doesn't seem to work for mortar so my mortar card does not have its uh, nice and good uh, endurance bonus until I activate it but the flamethrower car always has it when I'm wearing the doom pipe so so there's that as well um, so there's some fish, uh, fixed issues with the slammer skills uh, the, the issue with the weird numbers uh, is cooled down on spike drive as well then you've got the fixes uh, for the disk mage so there's some some issues fixed with energy spike not working in the few um, first levels then some issues with uh, uh, entropy's movement speed and the rework uh, uh, slight rework and rebalance of that movement speed based um, on on some feedback and some testing and then next we've got changes for the sharpshooter so there are some changes, some improvements to the sharpshooter skill procs, which I assume is the stun chance, the healing and all of that, those types of uh, skill procs uh, from the precision skills. And then and they changed the description to ghost visage, uh, it's interrupted by attacking, uh, I think it should be the other way around, uh, ghost visage should interrupt attacks. Um, so fix it so that sharpshooter sh uh, Shasta summon can be resummoned after we die. And this brings us to changes to the Forged Hero. So the first change they fixed is uh, a couple of Forged Channeling skills were visually animating on the client when they were rejected by the server. Then they fixed some issues where the Forged Tails wouldn't animate on other players' and machines. And then uh, issues with Ramming Robot Tier 3 effect uh, that uh, it would sometimes be removed. So I'm really happy to see the patch notes, all the changes, all the updates, uh, the Fazir's dungeon kind of uh, already being into the into the live server um, and hopefully gets improved soon. I can't wait for the next update which would be in roughly two weeks maybe more uh, where they give us the reworked relics. Um, read the full patch notes if you want to know more, inform yourself. Uh, they are all posted uh, uh, on Steam, uh, links in my description, in the video description below. If you want to get notified when I upload more content like this or build videos or guides or other informative uh, uh, videos about uh, this game or others like it or other types of RPGs such as uh, ARPGs, third person ones, isometric ones, uh, tactical RPGs uh, and some other Wooter games as well as every now and then something slightly different you can subscribe to my channel, click that bell button so you get notified. Uh, thank you again for watching this video Struck Club. Uh, keep it cool until next time and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.